about Rackspace's experience with systems engineering and OpenStack DevOps. I want to talk more about our experience as a consumer of the platform than as an engineer of the platform to give you a little bit of a sense of the lived experience of integrating both of these systems together at Rackspace. Before I do that, I want to say congratulations to everyone here and to people that are in the Open Compute Foundation. Uh, this is our first summit in Europe, and I think a sign of the uh, progression and maturity that the uh, movement has gained. Uh, this is a picture that you see on screen of Rackspace uh, celebrating a uh, uh, big milestone in uh, the number of employees that they had uh, hired a few years ago. Uh, if, if Rackspace uh, people, rappers, were here today, uh, I think you would see similar streamers and uh, lots of noise being tossed around the auditorium. First, a little bit about Rackspace and our first days with OCP, and I'll share a little personal story as well. Rackspace has over 200,000 customers uh, using a wide variety of our services, and I like to think of that as 200,000 unique IT shops that we manage. And if you are part of an IT shop function, or perhaps you've been employed in a few different uh, companies, IT organizations, you know how different uh, each one can be. Their cultures, their strategies, their uh, management structures, the way they do engineering, all very different. And we're a service company. We try and cater to the needs of each client on a very individual basis. And with those 200,000 customers, 200,000 IT shops, we have over 100,000 servers deployed and uh, many more networking devices and switches and so forth. Uh, many of them, outside of our public cloud infrastructure, have uh, their own customized, dedicated environments. And you can imagine the kind of complexity that that engenders across our data centers and with our own teams as we try to launch new applications and find ways to service those end users more effectively. The customers we have run a wide gamut. In our early days, we tended to serve a lot of uh, web startups. Uh, in the late 90s, that was, that was a big part of the business. But as time goes on, when we move upstream into bigger and bigger enterprises, we see customers with offices that are more like something operated out of a garage or, or a home office or studio. And we see those that are uh, much more mature and much more corporate. And again, that also brings complexity into our picture. To give you a small sense of our portfolio, we have, we have three major functions to our cloud service. We have a public cloud service, Rackspace Cloud. We have a managed hosting service, which we sometimes also call our dedicated hosting platform. It's our oldest uh, and longest running service. And we have a, a number of private cloud services that we deploy and support customers with as well. Within each one of those environments, there are a variety of hypervisors, a whole wide variety of applications, uh, different storage systems, different server platforms, uh, customers in large quantities, server counts and devices in large quantities, and a whole variety of applications in an environment where we say we want to have a close touch with our customer. It's complex. I have a confession to make. When Rackspace first got involved with Open Compute, I was not a fan. I spoke up uh, vocally with uh, our lead engineer that was working on the project at the time with some of our leaders, and I said, we run a very complicated platform. There's a lot of value we need to deliver to our customers in a bunch of different ways. And we've been down the road of designing our own systems before and integrating them. It takes a lot of effort, and I don't know if our customers really value that. Sure, it will save some money, you know, there's a lot of cost inside an organization to taking on these systems that haven't been designed and engineered uh, and sold through traditional channels. And I don't know if it's worth it, so I resisted. I, I, I confess that that was a mistake. Uh, actually, as I've learned uh, being involved with Open Compute, uh, since uh, we got really heavily uh, started with it, uh, we've actually benefited in ways that I was not thinking of at the time. Uh, a lot of people like to think of open computers as just a way to save some energy, uh, save money uh, on their equipment, and so forth. And I think you know, those are important and critical functions, but they are not the most important part of what open compute does for you. Open compute actually makes you faster and more effective with your service offerings once you once you 
you get up to speed and you're doing it right. And it gives you a level of control over your business and your infrastructure and your offerings and the speed at which you innovate that you don't have when you don't use open. Let me give you a sense of that. Earlier this year, we uh, were up on stage at, a, at an open feed summit in California. And uh, at the time, we talked about some of our progress uh, delivering platforms and what was in production and what was not. I'm going to tell you a story about our progress this year, about how Open Compute working within it has helped us to accelerate the rate at which we deliver platforms. Uh, I'm going to talk about the investments uh, that, that uh, we've made uh, within our own organization and what it's like working with our product managers, with our developers, our IT people to get these platforms out into our data center and supporting the application for our customers. So, by the numbers, since the beginning of this year, we've had 12 design starts on open compute solutions. Sometimes these are our servers. These are whole racks, uh, storage platforms, and so forth. This is us interacting with our business to determine a new kind of infrastructure to deploy for an existing application. From those 12 starts, we've gone to eight uh, fairly rigorous lab proof of concept uh, efforts. Those eight have gone to eight field trials, beta tests, and so forth. Of those eight, we have launched seven platforms uh, within our cloud, within our new on-metal service, and also uh, within Rackspace's uh, business intelligence platform. Uh, we hope to launch one more uh, before the end of the year uh, for an internal application. And we had an increase in our throughput, those numbers represent an increase of our throughput, about 100% year over year, with no increases in our engineering staff year over year. Looked at another way, in the second half of 2012, we were pretty engaged with Open Compute at that point in time, and I was still resisting. We had one design that we started. And you can see that we made some incremental investments in our staff to support Open Compute and the applications that we run. But we had made not much more significant investments uh, by the second half of 2013, and you can see the amount of throughput that we we are launching more platforms than we have uh, at any point in the past. Uh, we are designing more platforms than we have at any point in the past, bringing in more new technology. Uh, those are all items that can make the business operate uh, uh, with much more complexity. But in this case, the amount of control that we get over the platform and the amount of direct interaction that we have with our partners really gives us a chance to cut down on what would otherwise be a lot of noise in that process. We can zero in on exactly what value and what we need, and we can tune and optimize those components. And, and uh, we've discovered that when we tear the staff apart and we really start to get focused on what matters to us, uh, we actually move much more quickly than when we're trying to integrate components, uh, software and hardware uh, that, that weren't otherwise originally designed for us. We put a lot of effort into trying to uh, kind of grind off those, uh, those rough edges uh, or, or make uh, those square pegs fit around holes. But with Open Compute, we can get the right size peg uh, right off the bat. This is a picture of most of the engineering team that we have. This group doesn't just support Open Compute, they support all of our other server uh, offerings and some of our operating systems as well. Uh, just a few engineers, uh, a few project people, a few people working in our sourcer sourcing and uh, partner uh, division, uh, and then a couple of development functions and uh, some managers. Uh, it's, not, it's not a really big team, but this is the team that has shipped all of this equipment. So now I've talked about our team. I want to talk about our customers now. Uh, our first open compute offer was to be integrated with OpenStack Nova to support Rackspace's uh, cloud infrastructure as a service, uh, sometimes just known as Rackspace Cloud Servers. Uh, this is one of my customers, Thomas Dusing. Uh, Thomas uh, is the product manager over a very large number of servers and a, a good sized chunk of Rackspace's revenue. And it's a pretty mature offer of Rackspace today. He's offering, he's offering a, a solution and operating in a world that's more like that bigger, more mature customer that I talked about earlier, the kind, the kind of new service outside of Rackspace as well. Could be risk averse. 
is a lot riding on trying new things. And a lot riding on trying to integrate software that was built for another platform on new or different hardware. Uh, it took us about a year working initially with Thomas and his team to get to the point where they were ready to take this application up. But we discovered that most of the challenges that we ran into dealt more with coming to grips with the original operational model uh, and the change in software. And there was a lot more fear than there was substance to uh, getting the application in uh, We eventually got that platform launched. Uh, we, we actually added a great deal of value to uh, our cloud service platform at the point of that launch. Uh, Rack-based performance cloud was sort of born with the notion that we could take a lot of uh, these uh, performance enhancing items that we were putting into the service and we could do something new and better and different. Uh, and we poured a lot of that into our open compute designs as we, uh, as we pushed that product uh, into production. Uh, we have, uh, so far this year, launched two open compute platforms for uh, Thomas's offer, and we hope to launch two more between now and the end of the year. We've had less service issues, more stability, and fewer hardware failures with this platform so far than any other platform that we've launched into existence in Rackspace. So you can be very successful even with a mature offering like Rackspace's cloud service platform, bringing open compute into an application environment like this. This is another one of my customers. Uh, Rackspace, uh, Rackspace goes through periodic uh, uh, purchases of smaller companies. Uh, this is Ev Consovoy. Uh, he came to us through a purchase of a company called Mailgun. And uh, shortly after we acquired Mailgun, Ev was in a, a, a media room uh, where we produced some of our videos on uh, YouTube and so forth, uh, interviewing on uh, new and exciting things that he was thinking about for developers and so forth. And you can see the uh, whiteboard in the back of the room. I snapped a video frame of his interview here. Of course it's impossible, of course it's insane, but we're going to do it anyway. This is one of my customers. This is the other end of that game. And as was saying at the time that he had an idea, uh, he, he coming in had used uh, public cloud infrastructure before and he used colo infrastructure and dedicated infrastructure. And he said, you know, all of these cloud environments, they're good. They suit us pretty well, but I want to build a new cloud. I want to build a cloud that has teeth, more teeth. We called it Project Teeth for a while. And here was his first foundational idea. He said, uh, these multi-tenant cloud environments that we use, uh, their behavior and their performance and their availability is less consistent. Uh, sometimes uh, all, all of these uh, uh, gauges are in the green, other times they're in the red. Uh, you heard uh, Billy talking about this, that people sometimes like to cherry pick on public clouds. Uh, you know, maybe I'll spin up 10 more instances than I need to to find the one that is highest performing and most stable. What, what an end user really wants is for every one of them to perform at about the same level of consistency, but sometimes that's hard in shared hypervisor environments. So Ev said, look, those environments are good when you're prototyping, and then you start growing. And growth is the hardest part. We're breaking uh, into all of the areas where we have bugs, where we have scaling issues, and this is at a time when our customers are coming on and they're the most demanding, and the most uh, issues are sort of on the table and at stake for whether or not we're going to be viable as a company and our brand is going to be good. When we get past that and we get to a point where we can start optimizing uh, our infrastructure being it cost effective, then we're comfortable again. But this inconsistency in these clouds and these applications sometimes causes us problems. So, you know, when we don't have a lot of money and we're in startup mode, we want to prototype on these multi tenant clouds. But when we hit that, that real spike in our growth, we don't want to stay there because of this inconsistency. And so we end up going to Colo. We say, I was, you know, I was a customer of Rackspace and other providers. And my best option was to take it to Colo as quickly as I could once I thought it was viable. So this is the side of the spectrum that we need to solve for. So okay. So it really comes down to two trade-offs as Ev, as Ev saw it. If these are the two choices, one's very simple to scale and elastic, and the other is not. So how do we solve that? That's this cloud loop. <laughs> So this gets to our story of integrating OpenStack and Open Compute with Ironic that we used to turn out a new service this year, uh, just a few months ago, that we call Rackspace's OnMail Cloud Server Service. This is a dedicated single-tenant platform that provisions and deprovisions at cloud speeds. And since it's dedicated, its performance level is very consistent. 
It's designed to be the highest performing platform that we have at Rackspace. This brought in both new hardware that we had not deployed before and new components in OpenStack that had not been used in wide scale production before. So we had developers on both ends with all of the risk and ambiguity that could come with that working on this platform at the same time. And we had about two months from initial concept until we were asked to put out our first field trial of the platform, which is pretty impressive. Now, what we noticed in this as well is OnMail required that we deliver some new features in the platform uh, in, a, in a big multi-tenant environment, uh, uh, shared networks and so forth, and a cloud. A hypervisor brings you a lot of things that you need in order to keep your customers secure, separated from each other, and to keep your provisioning system moving very quickly. And if you take that hypervisor away, you have to find some way to replace some of those core functions. So we also ended up needing to go deep down into the firmware and the platforms that we were using and changing how they behave so we could give the end users all the power and performance that they wanted without risking the separation and security domains that we bring to our customer. We did all of this in just a few months time. It took us about three months from the point in time when we realized what we needed to do in the firmware of the platform to be tied to uh, code and ironic tied to uh, the servers that we were deploying uh, to the point where we had a really stable beta platform going. And in our traditional model of deployment through our traditional engineers and, and uh, solution providers, we are still working on getting the firmware features that we need into that platform today. We continue to work with them, but the speed at which this little team in this community could move is much, much faster than our traditional venues traditional ways of, of, uh, of doing business. So we've deployed north of 3,000 servers at this point in time using this model, and that will continue to ramp because we've only touched one, that little yellow square, one core set of applications in Rackspace. But it's been so good that we intend to expand this to the point where we're covering all those applications. And in order to do that effectively, I think we transitioned from saying that we need to use a traditional model that's sort of known and low risk to a model where we have all the control. The better model is the one where you as an end user, you as an IT shop, have this level of control over your infrastructure. And I think our story is the amount of incremental investment you need to get there is relatively small and pays off in space. I want to talk for just a minute about what we've learned in that process. Things we've learned, we talked a little bit about this last year. One of the first things we've learned is we do best when we get equipment out in the hands of our users as quickly as possible. So if you are going to get involved with open compute as an IT shop function, go out and get some and put it in. Get those users working on it. We've learned that developers like it when they can touch stuff, they can put their hands on it, either, either physically or across the network. And if, if you are looking at these systems and saying, what can I do with it? Don't spend a lot of time just writing stuff on paper. Go out and get some platforms to put them in. That's one of the things that we've learned. Another thing that we've learned is that we can take open much further than it is today in the world of hardware and get additional value. I'm going to talk about that just a little bit later. We did make some investments along the way, and the community has done the same. Uh, I think uh, if, if, if you look at Open computers exist today in all of the different domains that it covers. You might get the idea that there was uh, a very deliberate philosophy put forward to determine what we were going to bring into open compute, how soon we were going to bring it online, and, and you know what it was going to look like as a product or a deliverable. You can look back and see it that way, but when you're working on it day to day, sometimes you feel like we're on a train moving down the track and just barely laying out rail and ties and so forth just ahead of where we're going. Uh, the investments that we make, uh, they take some time to pay off, just like the team that we built at Rackspace initially, but the momentum that we develop along the way and the speed at which we're going is definitely worth it. So those investments, those incremental investments are critical. It's not completely free getting into it, but it does pay off. Gains that we've made. As a company, we've had those benefits of performance and those benefits of energy efficiencies and cost savings 
and so forth. And as a community, I think we've seen customers and other players do the same. But, but I think the biggest gain in the area where we've harvested the most has been in the actual uh, facilitation of bringing all of these different parties together. Software developers, hardware developers, firmware developers. As you saw in Cole's slides at the beginning, when you, sit, when you take out what separates those parties and you put them together and you start them working on new and interesting ideas, you really can get a great deal of movement in areas that you might have otherwise thought were kind of not going to move, things that were slow or, or locked down in the industry, things that don't change. When you hear Billy use